Welcome sa e-school ng bayan. Andito ako para samahan kayong mag-review. Tara, aral! Hi guys! Sa video na ito, i-discuss natin ang mga basics ng number theories. So first, we will discuss the properties of real numbers. And then, i-discuss natin yung basic definitions ng even and odd, prime and composite, multiples and factors. So let's start with the properties of real numbers. First one is closure property. So pagdating sa addition, if a plus b is equal to c and a and b are real numbers, then C is also a real number. So, ang sinasabi lang nito is kapag nag-add ka ng dalawang real numbers, yung sagot mo dapat or yung sum mo should also be a real number. Ganun din pagdating sa multiplication. If you multiply A and B and A and B are real numbers, the product should also be a real number. Next is associative property. So, associative property has something to do with grouping. Associative property of addition, if say we're adding quantity A plus B plus C, pareho lang ang makukuha mong sagot if you add A plus quantity B plus C. So for example, here we have 2 plus 3 plus 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. How about 2 plus quantity 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 is 7. 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. So as you can see, kahit ano man yung i-group natin, ang makukuha nating sagot is still the same. So similarly, pagdating sa associative property of multiplication, if we multiply quantity A times B times C, we will get the same answer when we multiply A times quantity B times C. Next is commutative property. So, commutative property has something to do with the order. So, for addition, if we add A plus B, ang makukuha nating sagot will be the same if we add B plus A. For example, 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. 4 plus 2 is also equal to 6. So, as you can see, hindi nagmamatter yung order, kung ano yung mauna. In the same way, sa commutative property of multiplication, if we multiply A times B, parehong makukuha nating sagot kapag B times A. Example, 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 4 times 2 is also equal to 8. Okay, so concept-wise, madali namang itindihin ang associative and commutative. Ang nagiging problem minsan is, which is commutative and which is associative. Okay, so one way to remember this is by looking at this. So when we say commutative, it starts with the syllable ko. C and O. C for commutative and O for order. Since commutative has something to do with the order, then yung associative property must be related to grouping. So ganun ko lang siya inaalala. Okay, so moving on, we have identity property. So ang sinasabi lang naman ng identity property of addition is kapag meron kang number and you add zero to this number, ang sagot mo will be the number itself. Okay, so mamimaintain niya yung kanyang identity. For example, 7 plus 0 will give you 7. Okay? So, kahit gano'n pa rin yung kalaking number, if you add 0, the answer will be the number itself. Sa so identity property of multiplication naman, if you multiply a number by 1, the answer or the product will be the number itself. For example, B times 1 will give you B. 8 times 1 will give you 8. Next, we have inverse property. So, for the inverse property of addition, sinasabi lang nito na if you add a number and it's additive inverse, the answer would be 0. So, ano ba yung additive inverse? For example, if you have A, ang additive inverse nito would be the negative of A. In the same way, if you have 7, ang additive inverse ng 7 would be negative 7. So, 7 plus negative 7 is just equal to zero. Sa inverse property of multiplication naman, meron tayong multiplicative inverse. So, ang multiplicative inverse ng isang number is yung reciprocal ng number na ito. So, ano ba yung reciprocal ng isang number? For example, B. Ang reciprocal niya is 1 over B. How about number 2? Anong reciprocal ng 2? It is 1 half or 
1 over 2. So if we multiply a number and its multiplicative inverse, the answer would be 1. For example, 8 times 1 over 8 is equal to 1. Zero property of multiplication. So ang sinasabi lang nito is, if we have a number and we multiply it by 0, the answer will always be 0. So kahit gano'ng kalaki pang number yan, basta you multiply it by 0, the answer will always be 0. Okay, last property, we have distributive property of multiplication over addition. So anong sinasabi nun? If meron tayong A times quantity B plus C, pwede natin i-distribute ang A such that we will have A times B plus A times C. So kapag makikita nyo sa ibang videos ko, I would say distribute 2, distribute 3. Na ibig sabihin lang nun is, for example, 2 times 3 plus 4. I-distribute natin ang 2. So, i-multiply natin ang 2 kay 3 at kay 4. Alright? So, we will have 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. So, that's it for our properties of real numbers. Let's move on to some basic definitions of our integers and whole numbers. First, we have here our even and odd numbers. So, ano pinagkaiba nila? So, basically, ang even numbers natin is divisible by 2. So, these numbers end in 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Examples are 2, 48, 306. Odd numbers are numbers that are not divisible by 2. So, meron tayong magiging remainder, remainder 1. So these numbers would end in 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Examples are 9, 21, and 67. Okay, minsan madami din ako confused dito. Factors and multiples. So, factors is what you multiply to another number. So, factor, yun yung minumultiply natin. Ang multiple naman, parang yun yung sagot sa multiplication natin. So, it's a result of multiplying a number by an integer. So, for example, pagdating sa factors, what are the factors of 8? Factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. Kasi, 1 times 8 is equal to 8. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So 1, 2, 4, and 8 are factors. How about multiples of 8? Multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24, 32. So ano ibig sabihin nun? Yung 8, multiply natin by our integers. So 8 times 1, that's equal to 8. 8 times 2, that's equal to 16. 8 times 3, that's equal to 24, and so on. Kasi marami tayo integers. So another thing to note is that may definite number of factors tayo. For example, ang factors ng 8, apat lang ang meron tayo. Pero ang multiples of 8, there are infinite possibilities. Next is prime and composite numbers. So prime numbers are numbers that has two factors only. Okay, dalawa lang talaga yung factors ng prime numbers. One, and itself. For example, factors of 7, 1 and 7. Factors of 31, 1 and 31. So, dalawa lang talaga always. How about our composite numbers? So, our composite numbers are numbers that has more than two factors. For example, in the case of 32, ano ang factors niya? We have 1 times 32, 2 times 16, 4 times 8. So, 32 is an example of a composite number. So here are our prime numbers below 100. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. So lahat ng numbers na nakikita nyo ngayon are numbers na ang kanyang factor ay 1 and itself. So bakit nakahighlight yung 2, 3, 5, and 7? Kasi later when we do prime factorization, I want you to remember this 3 kasi if we're gonna do prime factorization, dito tayo always magsisimula sa 2, 3, 5, and 7. So, question, how about 0 and 1? 0 and 1 are neither composite nor prime. Okay, natakpan ko. Pero, ang 0 at 1 ay hindi considered na composite. Hindi rin siya prime. Okay? So, that's it for our basic definitions in number theories. Our next lesson would be about prime factorization.